Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make icebox cookies and this is what they look like. They have wonderfully crisp edges and they're sweet and buttery and full of chopped red cherries. So to make your batter, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment or you could use a hand mixer or really you could just large bowl with a wooden spoon. The first thing you will need is one cup, which is 225 grams of butter. I'm using unsalted here because I prefer the flavor and have it at room temperature. And now I'm just going to beat it just for a second just to get it nice and creamy and smooth. And as always, when you're making any kind of batter, scrape down the sides and the bottom of the, your bowl as much as you need to to make sure all your ingredients are mixed together. So the next thing we need to add is one cup, 200 grams of granulated white sugar. And I'm going to beat this on medium high speed till it's nice and light and fluffy. We want a little air in the batter, so that may take two, three minutes. As you can see, it's all mixed together. A bit of air in there. So now we're going to add one large egg and have that at room temperature. This batter is really like a sugar cookie batter. You will probably recognize if you've ever made those. And then for flavoring, I'm adding one and a half teaspoons, which is six grams. Now you can use either a pure vanilla extract or I'm actually using today the uh, vanilla bean paste. I like that because you get the little um, seeds from the vanilla bean. You also could use just the seeds from one, large, one vanilla bean if you want to use that. So I'm just going to beat this in. Okay, so now in a separate bowl, I have two and two thirds cups, which is 345 grams of all purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon, two grams of baking powder. That'll just give our cookies just a bit of a lift. And a half a teaspoon, two grams of um, salt. I'm using the kosher salt because I prefer, it's got a milder flavor than say table salt, but you can use either one. Now if you use salted butter, which you, you can in this recipe, I would just leave out the salt I just added to the recipe, to the flour here. And then I'm just using a whisk, whisk that all together. You could sift the flour if you want to. And then, of course, we have the candied red cherries. You will need a scant one cup, which is about 150 grams of chopped red candied cherries. You could also use, there is green candied cherries. You could use those or have a mix if you want. And I'm going to add them to the um, flour, because as you can see, it's just a big, they're so sticky, a big lump there so I'm going to kind of I'm going to put my hands right in there and kind of break them up and toss them in the flour. Now I know some people do not like candied fruit um, so you could use dried fruit you know like uh, uh, cherries or dried cranberries just cut them up into small pieces. You could use chopped nuts I mean this is kind of a recipe you have the basic dough and then you could add different things to it. Okay, that looks good. My hands here. So I'm just going to add this to my batter. We'll mix it together and then we are done. This is a really quick and easy recipe. So I'm going to do this slowly because there's a lot of flour. We don't want that coming up in our face. Okay, so that's it. We are done. So let's move everything out of the way. So now, 
This is really what you'd call a slice and bake cookie. So we are going to form our batter into a log shape. Could you roll it out and cut it into individual cookies? Yes, but I like this because, especially, you know, it's kind of a Christmas cookie. And so I can make the bad, the logs, and I can freeze them. So I can do this well ahead of time. And then when I want to bake the cookies, I just, you know, slice them and bake them off. So it's a really, you know, if you're kind of busy and you can make this way ahead. And who doesn't like that? <laughs> So now, I'm going to divide this in half. You could just eyeball it. Um, if you have a scale, which I always recommend, uh, you need about 470 grams for each log. So that's about right. So now, you will need two pieces, because we're doing two logs, um, of either parchment paper, you could just use wax paper, really you could use plastic wrap. Now I'm forming my um, each one into a 10 inch log, 25 centimeters. So if you, you can get just get your ruler out, or if you want, like what I've done here is just make two marks on my paper, so I don't have to be, and I'll just turn that over, and I can see that, and then I don't have to keep with my ruler. So just, now I'm doing like a rectangle shape. Could you do it in a round? Yes, you could do that too. But I find it hard sometimes to get that perfect round. So I prefer doing it into more of a rectangle. Much easier for me. So if you have one of these handy tools, kind of. Now you could, depends if you want like thin or you want tall with, so you can do this as wide, the logs are as wide as you want. That's about, I think it's about a couple inches, five centimeters is normally what I do. So that's all you have to do. And then I just take and just kind of wrap the paper and just roll it up. Now obviously we can't do this we can't bake them right away because this is very soft so you need to put this if you wanted to bake them today that'd be fine uh, put the logs into the refrigerator chill three to four hours and then you can bake them off or what you could do is just put this right into the freezer wrap it up really well put it in the freezer for a month or two and then you could uh, just later just slice and bake them so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put these into the refrigerator let them chill and when we come back we will bake our cookies so now we are ready to bake our cookies. So preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 190 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a baking sheet. I've lined mine with parchment paper, but you could just lightly butter or spray your uh, baking sheet with one of those non-stick sprays. Now, so you have your log. I like to slice the cookies into a quarter inch, which is about half a centimeter. So I use my trusty ruler, and then I just take, put your log on a cutting board, which I have there, and then just go, and then I just make marks all the way down, how many you want to bake, and then with a sharp knife, you just cut through, and you have your cookies. Try to make, the reason I, I measure is that every cookie is the same thickness, so then it will bake in about the same amount of time. So then just space them, you know, a couple inches apart, about five centimeters. So I'm going to do, what have I got there, 15. And then what I, you can do is just wrap this back up and, and put it back in the refrigerator or freezer. Or if you want to bake more, just bake more. So um, everyone's oven is a little different. I find, for the way I like these cookies, about 10 minutes. Of course, with this type of cookie, a sugar cookie, the longer you bake them, the more crisp they will be. So you can kind of, I like them just starting to brown around the edges and they do take on a little bit of a, color, uh, of a color. And that way you have the crisp edges and then more soft and chewy in the center. That's how I like them. Like I said, a little longer, be more crispy, a little less, be a little softer. So about 10 minutes. Okay, 
so our icebox cookies are done. As you can see, nicely golden brown around the edges. And so I've just put my baking sheet on a wire rack, let them cool about, you know, a couple of minutes in the pan, and then just use your spatula to transfer them to the rack to finish cooling. We'll do that, and when we come back, we will try one. So let's try one. What I like about this cookie is how the edges are so nice and crisp, yet in, in the center it's more soft and chewy, and they're sweet, and they're buttery. And, and then you have, if you're like me, you like candied cherries. They're kind of soft and chewy, which just adds to it. And you know, they're so cover, colorful, perfect for Christmas. As I said, you can freeze the logs and then just slice and bake, which makes them perfect. So try these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.